Now we shall discuss about the foreign policy of India. What is a foreign policy? Any nation, let it be put name as A. A nation to have relation with a nation with B or any nation having relation with the other nations is called foreign policy. The nation may be positive or negative. Any nation which wants to have relation with the other nation is called foreign policy or at the same time if any nation which does not want to have relation with the other nation also comes under the foreign policy. It's that like positive as well as negative. A nation put it like this way A wants to have relation with B is also a foreign policy and also a nation which does not want to have relation with B or with another nation also is a form of foreign policy which means that like for example India likes to have relation with Sri Lanka, Nepal, China, Bhutan or some other nations it comes under positive side at the same time India does not want to have clear relations with Pakistan if they are in, introducing into the Kashmir issue so in this way the same standard can be maintained at the same nation at two different views that is why foreign policy is very important and very crucial and by the time India became independent Indians are in a situation that where India has to choose between the two great superpowers. I think you all know the two superpowers. One is USA representing the democratic bloc. The other superpower what we are having is the USSR. Now, these are the two superpowers which have emerged after India, I mean like after the World War II, after 1945, the entire world scenario has changed. We got USA and USSR, the two different ideologies representing with the two powerful national armies present for them. Later on, they moved on to turn into a two superpower nations. Now, USA is a bloc which is having a support of nearly 30 nations and they are truly democratic countries or capitalistic countries. Whereas USSR, the Union Soviet of Socialist Republic, is a communist country which is having a backup of nearly 19 nations around it and so this is another group. So we have a group A headed by USSR, sorry USA and group B headed by USSR. Now India is in a situation like which country has emerged recently into an independent nation after 1947 have a choice to join either USA or USSR. It should take either the stand towards capitalistic and democratic setup or towards the communistic. By the time we took the democratic setup, it is clear that we are going to join towards USA. And Jawaharlal Nehru personally had very good intimacy with the USSR leaders. And he appointed his own sister as an ambassador to the US, USSR. So now what is the conflict that we are going to maintain it? Are we going to get the success towards USA or towards USSR? The clear ideology was made by our leader Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru and he made it very clear that he is not going to join in any of the blocks. And he started the movement called non-aligned movement. Not to align either towards the USA or towards the USSR. He made it very clear that he is going to stand alone in the middle and he is going to maintain very good relationships with USA and with USSR but his ideology is that the newly independent nations should have a choice of not joining any of the power blocks which may in turn result into any kind of war situation in the future. So in order to safeguard himself from any of the further controversies he made it very clear by three group nations like the nations which joined in this NAM are India, Yugoslavia, and Egypt. From India we have Jawaharlal Nehru, from Egypt we have Gamal Abdul Nazar and Joseph Brizo Tito of Yugoslavia. These three main leaders signed the charter in 1954-55 mentioning that the non-aligned movement is going to take part. Initially he has to get the criticism from 
both the two superpower blocks and the other nation groups but later they understood the real interest of the nam policy and later they appreciated today india is a leader of the nam group of 77 countries which is the largest group owned by the indian leadership now moving on to the facts of because of the indian foreign policy did we go into any kind of wars are the wars been successful for us or being failure for us what were the consequences when did we get real actual situations of war what are the conditions which led us to go for war we'll discuss all these things now moving on to the wars because of the indian foreign policy we have discussed the indian foreign policy india did not stand on any of the situations either towards the uh, usa group or towards the ussr group either towards the communist bloc or towards the capitalist bloc or the democratic setup now coming to the wars issue because of the indian foreign policy india has immediately has to face a war in the year 1948 actually india did not prepare for any kind of situation of wars in the year of 1948 india has to face a threat from pakistan or the issue of kashmir in 1948 so initially we had a war in 1948 again we had another war in the year 1962 with china this was a war which was a very huge war and they should turn it into very seriously because we could not prepare any self we were not developed so much and we could not attain anything much successfully and we have heavy loss and heavy casualties were found in the 1962 war this was another black spot on the indian context of wars and again we have another war in 1965 the other war again with pakistan on the issue of kashmir in this way the wars were with three four wars we have again in 1971 we have another war again with the pakistan and with the formation of bangladesh we got the break up of pakistan and east pakistan and west pakistan in this way we got the different kinds of wars and because of this wars the development of india was blocked and we could not reach to the success of the development and lot of money or huge investment of the money was done in the arms and that was wasted in such a kind where we can't get any rupee back repaid for us in this way wars were not a true success for any country but they are a failure and it's not bringing any solution only through negotiations we can get a solution for our requirement of the problem so wars were done between india and pakistan india and china and on the issue of kashmir even today we may get a war there are serious issues of getting a war only and only on the issue of kashmir who succeeded jawahar lal nehru we'll discuss now